Hello everybody, uh, today we are working on some more on functions in their graphs for pre-calculus. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing, let's talk about, I have this graph on the screen and uh, we are looking for on which intervals the graph or the function is increasing, decreasing. So uh, we are looking for intervals. You know intervals are x values only intervals uh, on which intervals the function function increases or decreases okay so we are looking for this now how do you figure it out increase decrease on this there's an easy way to do this like I have this graph and you know the when when there is no uh, point up there or something so it's just I think it's just stopped it's not continuously going but um, let's figure it out that's besides the point a function increase decrease now look it up here I know increase goes something like this when I when I draw a tangent line here like for example up here if I pick any point, okay, any points up there, up here, up here, and I'm going to pick all these points, and I'm going to draw a tangent line. When I draw a tangent line, like a small line right there, this tangent line means when the line touches the graph once. That's a tangent line. So I mean, my tangent line, that one was bad. Let's go back. So I draw a tangent line up here. You know that tangent line is positive, positive, and the slope is positive, like it looks positive. You know the line goes like this, that's a positive slope. And if the line goes like this, that's a negative slope. And I um, I have a really good cartoon face for that, that you guys can remember. Uh, like this, like that, that's positive, that's negative. The nose stays undefined and um, the horizontal goes like undefined, something like this. Okay, that was bad. Let me try again. I am forgetting it because it's been a long time ago. Uh, positive, negative, undefined because it's a U. And then I uh, undefine, and then we have this zero. So positive slope, negative slope, undefined, and zero. Okay, so these are all positive slopes. Like, do you see positive slopes? So positive slope is means it's increasing. So I started with one right there. This is one. So from one to infinity, I'm going the graph is increasing so I'm gonna say increasing on parentheses uh, 1 to positive infinity and it's also increasing here when I draw tangent lines you see that up here it's also increasing so I'm also increasing I can you put you you means union like together I do negative infinity and the smallest number goes first. So negative infinity to negative one. So the the graph is increasing in all of those. Now what about this? Oh, do you see this? This the slope is kind of zero, like a horizontal, like a zero, like that one. About it's zero. So but I know this is negative. Like from negative 1 to positive 1, it's decreasing. So decreasing, the graph is decreasing on negative 1 to 1. So that's decreasing and that's increasing. And this is exactly uh, the way we teach in AP calculus. Increase, decrease. Okay, well, what else we need? Um, we need a relative maximum or minimum. So I can also figure it out a maximum and minimum from the graph. You know the maximum means this is maximum. This is the maximum portion of the 
graph and this is the minimum portion of the graph so you can say relative maximum relative okay not there is another uh, um, max and min too but we talking about right now relative max relative max is at x equal negative one and relative min minimum at x equal positive one okay so these are relatives relative max and relative min okay let's try some more things about even and odd and we we figure it out all these things from the graph maybe further when we go into pre-calculus more videos we are gonna find out all of this stuff using al algebraic function like algebraically we will figure it out okay what is um, even and odd functions even and odd functions okay the thing is the function is even the function is going to be even if when I plug in negative x in the function I'm supposed to get positive function the same function but it's going to be positive then it's even for the odd when you plug in negative x the whole function changes to negative so that's odd and even now let's do one example for this for odd and even for example i have h of x equal x to the power of five plus one now find out if this is even odd or neither so i'm gonna find it i'm gonna do even first if this is negative x so i'm gonna plug in negative x in this h function so negative x to the power of five plus one it would give me negative x to the power of five plus one and that's what i got for the function right so you know the function is not just like original original was everything positive this is negative so it means this is not even this is not even not at all uh, and the, we were looking for even right now so this is not even because I'm not getting exactly the same original one let's figure it out if this is odd so I'm gonna do h of x equal x5 plus 1 and odd means I'm going to plug in that negative so again this is negative x to the power of 5 plus 1 it will give me negative x 5 plus 1 and you can tell this is not odd either because odd means the whole function turned to um, this the, the whole function is supposed to be negative so the function is not odd in this case are we clear guys so the function is not odd if it's not odd then it means it's neither okay let's go for the next one even function even function in y-axis symmetry Okay, the graph of even function in which f negative x is equal f of x is symmetric with with respect to the y-axis. Okay, so when we get even function, this is even. Because when I plugged in negative x, I'm supposed to get original function as it is. So it's symmetric with respect to y-axis. Now if we do odd functions at and origin symmetry, so let's try that. If we function plug in negative x and we get negative f of x, like the whole function turned to negative, then it's symmetric with respect to origin. Odd is this with, uh, symmetric with respect to origin. So symmetric. with respect to origin okay um, okay let's try some examples for evaluating piecewise functions so I have a piecewise function the question is evaluate P 
piecewise function. Okay, the function that I have is c of t, and I have that bracket, this is 20. The restrictions for this is if 0 plus equal t, t less equal 60. Next, I have 20 plus 0 0.40 t minus 60 if t greater than 60. So that's what I got. Now, the question is asking, find C40 and C80. Now, that's a good question. Pay attention here. C40, and I have two pieces uh, in this piecewise function, like two pieces the function CT has. So how do I figure it out? I know C40 means I have to plug in this X40 in the function. But where should I plug it in here or should I? I mean, this one doesn't have anything, but should I plug it in here? You have to check your restrictions really, really carefully. So they said 40. Do you see this says T is greater than 40 and greater means the alligator mouth is towards T. So that's why T is greater, T greater than 60. So 40 doesn't fit in here. But this one says t less or equal 60. So we can go less than 60 or we t go greater than 0. But we have a 40, so we are all, you, we know it's 0 of um, greater than four, 0, but it's less than 60. So I'm going to use this 20. So I can say c40 is equal 20. Since we don't have anything, you know that there is nothing there to plug in. But I can tell if it's t less or equal 60, which means 40 fit in there, then it's 20. For 80, you know t greater than 60. So anything that greater than 60 can fit in here. So I'm going to plug in that c80 here. 20 plus 0 0.40, 80 minus 60. And the question is going to give me 28 when you solve. So up here, that's my 40 is 20, and this is 28. So that's my answer, and that's how you solve a piecewise function. Okay. Um, there is another thing in pre-calculus that uh, you guys gonna see it and also this is in AP calculus so this is what we have definition of the difference quotient of a function Okay, different quotient, difference quotient. Difference means subtraction, quotient means division. So what is that supposed to mean? You have an expression for this, and that expression is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. This is the expression which is called difference quotient. This is a difference quotient. Difference quotient is right there. Now, if you have a question, for example, Evaluate difference and simplify a difference quotient. Evaluate and simplify, okay? Evaluate and simplify difference quotient Okay, so my function the if f of x equal negative 2x squared plus x plus 5. So find and simplify the expression. So now I'm using this expression to solve this. Okay, closely pay attention. I need this portion. I'm going to write this in. I need this portion first. How would I figure it out? You're going to go, I need this expression, then I'm going to use this formula up here. But before I solve, uh, uh, plug in the formula, you know I need this first, and then we're going to figure it out that, and the h is going to stay as an h. 
x plus h means this whole thing is an x. So wherever I see x in the function, I'm going to replace it with x plus h. So let's try that first. Wherever I see x, I'm replacing with <coughs> x plus h. Now let's plug in negative 2 x plus h squared plus x plus h plus 5. Now let's solve this. And you know this is squared, then there is an easy way to do this. Negative 2 is going to stay anyway. Um, you multiply x. I mean, this is a shortcut, okay? Otherwise, you can do x plus h and x plus h, two of those, and you do the distributive property, uh, which is also called a FOIL. So you can use this and figure it out. But I, I'm going to tell you easy way how to do this. Multiply x twice, so that's going to be x squared. Then uh, you leave the space here, and I have plus multiply h twice, it's going to be h squared. And it's a plus sign, so plus positive times positive is positive anyway. Now, plus is going to stay here too, that one. Okay, so what, what do we do in the middle? 2 times this times this. 2 times x times h. So it's going to give me 2xh. And that's the easy way to do that. Plus x plus h plus 5. Okay, now let's solve this further. Distribute that negative 2. So I'm going to get negative 2x squared. I did that. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4xh. And negative 2h squared. And I'm going to remove the parentheses so I can combine my like terms. You know the one that is invisible one, you can distribute a positive, um, positive 1 times x is positive x, positive 1 times h is positive h. Okay, so this is what I got so far. Now, none of the terms are like terms or I can cancel them out or anything. So I'm going to leave this alone. Now, in, an, in, the, in the first one, do you see? I need this one. The f of x means is just the original function that we have right there. Okay, and then divide by h. Now, everything is set up uh, for f of x plus h. Now, I'm going to plug in everything in this equation. So, let's go and plug it in. For example, the function I have, I'm going to write it again because we can see it now. f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So, let's plug in f of x plus h, which we got right there. So it's going to be negative 2x squared minus 4xh minus 2h squared plus x plus x plus h plus 5 minus that minus minus f of x. f of x means the original function that we had. So our original function, and I'm going to put parentheses there so I know that's the original one minus 2x squared plus x plus 5 in close. In the bottom, we have h which is going to stay. Now, let's distribute because we have to get rid of the parentheses. So, this is invisible one. So, the negative is going to go negative. Negative is going to go positive. Negative is going to go another positive. So, let's try that. And then we combine like terms if we have any. 4xh minus 2h squared plus x. x I don't know why I'm saying x. x plus h plus 5. Negative times negative is positive 2x squared. Negative times positive is negative x. Negative times positive is negative 5. Everything is what? Ih. Now, do I have any like terms here? Yes, we do. 2x squared and negative 2x squared. So, they cancel out. I have x and ax. They cancel out. I have 5 and 5. They cancel out. So I'm left with negative 4xh minus 2h squared over h. Okay, this is everything left. Now let's do, um, uh, I'm like, I can't do anything with this, but other than uh, least common, not least common, common uh, factor, which is h in this case. So if h is common factor, then I'm left with negative 4x minus 2h. You know, I took out the h. So this h disappear and that is only one h left inside and I'm going to go divide h. You know the cancel out? 
and this would be the case every time you get something like this you have to at the end you have to factor it out something common factor so i'm left with negative 4x minus 2h uh do i have anything else there oh i had this h i forgot that right there so i should have plus one here and that's plus one and that's my answer we can't do anything with that okay so that's how we're gonna deal with these questions make sure that you understand this one you're gonna see them a lot in pre-calculus in ap calculus these ones as long as you plug this in correctly uh, replace x with that and also it's always going to be a common factor that you can cancel out the bottom h with it okay um, please like my video if you have any questions comment below